I was starting out to make a video at work on how to remove a frozen action screw. I had this old Chilean 1895 Mauser rifle and the front screw was frozen. <clears throat> Basically the plan was to drill through the head until you break the screw and then the action comes apart. Well, that's what happened, but uh, there were other complications. The thing was stuck together bad. So you could, I took the time to make it, so we'll go through that part where I'm drilling and I get up to where I drill out and then I actually started using an end mill to cut it even, even more. Uh, we'll, we'll view, you know, I'll put that video footage in and I'll do a, a recap here or whatever at the end. Alright, a lot of times I get emails from people telling me they got an old rifle and the trigger guard screws are frozen. Much like this uh, 1895 Chilean Mauser. Now a lot of these Spanish South American guns had the same problem. Take the handguard off, there's heavy rust in that built up and the rust has creeped down to where it has locked the front trigger guard screw because underneath the wood it's all rusty. The rear one comes off okay, but this one is frozen. Now, I tried everything. I tried uh, soaking it with balistol, trying to let it run down the stock, and I used different screwdrivers and, you know, cheater bars, the whole nine yards, but nothing. So now we have to go, and basically what I'm going to do is, because I do have to get this gun apart to check the rust, there is pitting in the barrel. Pitting. I'm going to have to drill out the screw <clears throat> and basically drill the head out or cut it out on a bridge port and then get a replacement screw. The gun is not in mint condition. It is not, you know, it's, it's, an, un it's an unusual gun. We'll go over that later when we do an overview, but uh, you got to make the call. It's not in that great a condition. The screws are not numbered. And you can replace this with another screw for just about any 1893 Mauser or even the uh, Swedish 1896s will fit this. So I got a screw on order. I'm going to take this one out and get the gun apart so I can work on it. What we're going to do is set it up in the bridge port. And I'll take you through step by step on what I'm going to do and show you how I'm going to do it. Okay, basically, what you have to do if you're doing this method is you have to have a screw that you're going to replace it with, and you need a screw. Because you're going to have to take measurements off of the screw to calculate how far and what size drill you use. You know, don't call me and say, I got this gun, what size drill, I don't know. Okay, you, you just, I'm going by. I took this screw out of uh, another Mauser rifle. Same screw fits. I lift it up. So you take the screw and you measure the diameter here without the thread. Comes out to 253,000. Okay, that's the diameter there. The game plan is take the center drill, center up the screw, center drill, drill down, and then drill with the drill a little bit bigger to the depth. The depth on this is about 280,000. In other words, drill about the same diameter down through the center until you cut it off and then break the head free. Okay? If you could center up an end mill and just plunge the end mill down until it breaks this through, the only thing about this, chances are you are going to touch the inside of the trigger guard. Now what I decided to do is take the center drill, center drill at the center of the slot, then I'm going to run an eighth inch drill down into the screw itself. This, this is to help guide the larger drill and do a little stress release. I'm going to run an eighth inch drill down about here, that depth, just there. Doesn't matter, the screw's no good. I have the eighth inch drill. Then like I said, it was 254,000. 
I'm going to follow that down with a 268,000 drill. Now this is bigger than that neck. And as you see there's the drill point, what you're going to have to do is somewhere close to the diameter. Once this pushes down through the center, it'll cut that head off. Is basically what we're out to do. And that's why you have to have the screw and take the head measurement, thickness of the head, here. This is about 300,000 from that down there. Should get us to break off. Alright, so let's go take a look at my setup and see how we're going to start this off. Okay, we have the rifle in the Bridgeport milling machine, the drill chuck, and a center drill in there. Now, we got a padded vise. We got the rifle resting in there. Kind of level that somewhat the best you can. The padded vise holds it with the stock. It's steady. We're not going to exert a lot of pressure. And the center drill we have kind of lined up on the center of the screw. And you kind of, I just kind of eyeball it. It isn't that close uh, of a deal. There's no way to pick it up or anything. And we're just going to come down and put the center drill in there and drill it out and drill down to 300,000. I'll show you how we calculate all that. Basically what I'm going to do is put a center in it, put the small drill in to cut a relief, and then take the larger drill and start drilling. And once I get to where the tip is in and cuts on the shoulder, I'll come back up here and start to stop. I'll turn the drill off, start to stop, put a 300,000 gauge pin in here, and then I'll, I'll know how far to go with the large drill and it should break. Okay, so let's get started. center and get a hole down past the slot down in there so the drill has something the larger drill has something to call. Okay, that's what we got so far. We got a little drill in there, and we're going to get our larger drill, and I'm going to get a gauge pan around 380, and then we're going to make the final drill out and cut. Okay, so we're at this point. Got our pile of hole in set of drill. Now you know how I know how far to go. Well, what we're going to do is we're just going to start, and we're going to drill down where the point gets in and we start cutting an actual round hole. So I'll bring the camera in for close up. It's all done by eye.
Okay, if you look at the hole, I drilled down, there's the drill point that that tapered part of the chamfer style, until you just start seeing the edge of the cutting. That's the diameter. Like so, in other words, you keep drilling down until you see the edge. And then what we're going to do is push down on this and then wheel our stop up with our, we want to go 350 thousandths, got a gauge pan out of the inspection wheel. So I'll show you that process. Okay, so like I said, push down on the drill until it's in the hole. And I got to wheel this up here to stop. Put the gauge pan. Sorry about that, but as you see, the stop is up with the gauge pin for now. The drill is set where it will only go 380,000 before the stop. Now that's a relative distance, that's just for safety. If we go down and touch that, the drill should just start cutting, should be cutting into the curtain. So let's drill it out, and the thing is, we'll go over the other side. You set the stop. So then you just keep an eye on it as you drill, take your time, drill slow. And if you see that screw head move or break and you might hear a pop, stop. That means you drill the head off the screw. something good there, so I'm going to check it out. Okay, what I've done is remove the rear guard screw. Let's see if I can get it to move me. I don't know. So, we're going to go a little deeper. Okay, I took off the floor plate, got everything open. That's what we got so far, but the trigger guard's still in there kind of tight. So I'm going to sit down and see if I can tap this loose somehow, getting down in there, giving it a tap to see if that, or we're going to have to expand the hole to open that up more, maybe with an end there. Okay, we didn't quite break through. So we know that the bolt head's 380, it isn't quite 100% on center, so I got a drill bit, a larger one, that's about 300,000. And we're going to see if we can drill that and open it up. We're not going to go all the way down, we're just going to try to cut the bolt.
now I got a 312 under. And I'm gonna just try to wheel it down in there and clean this out. Okay, as you seen, I went and drilled it out, and everything went well. I had the depths right in, and I, I knew I broke the screw. But, and again, I have to, now I have to do another video. This is a common problem. With a lot of these South American Mauser rifles, they'll be 1893s or whatever, or 95s like this, there's something about the climate and something about how they stored them. I don't know if it's the jungle, the humidity, or whatever. But what will happen is the gun on the outside will look fine, just like an old used gun. But it will rust under the wood line. Now when I bought this gun at an auction, I noticed when I got it home, somebody pulled it apart and looked for this. Okay? And what I mean by, I'll take a closer look here, is uh, the action, as you see, you know, outwardly, it looks all right. But I don't know if the moisture or whatever draws up under the wood line, but all along where the stock is and underneath the hand guards, and that, like your receiver's nice, fairly nice, not terrible, but as you see, it's rust. Rust and this caked up crap. Very bad, okay? And I did hit that right. I broke that screw just like I wanted to, and if you notice, it turns. But the head of the screw is still stuck in the trigger guard up in here. I even used the mill to try to mill it out. It's stuck in the trigger guard. It's still pretty well frozen into the uh, stock itself. And if you look inside the stock, what the problem is, is down in here, the rust in it, I guess, the moisture, whatever, it's, it's filled all the way up. That has to be all scraped and cleaned out of there. It's like the rust, moisture, and the action, the metal part, was actually stuck to the wood. Even though I broke the screw, like the uh, trigger guard, it's stuck in the stock. <clears throat> and what I had to do is I had to hold the gun, with one hand on the stock, one hand under the action, and my buddy at work took a punch and was beating down on that screw. Here, this portion of the screw, he was hitting that with a small punch. But even though we seen it come free, and break loose from the trigger guard. We, we still had a hell of a time with it disassembled. I had it assembled when I made the video because when I broke the screw I didn't want it to just drop down uh, from the wood in the vise. But I had to beat this thing out of the stock. It was actually frozen into the stock. So that's going to do our video on removing a frozen uh, screw. And now I'm going to make a video about this uh, rifle, <clears throat> and uh, this is a common problem with guns from this region, or these type of surplus guns.